over there, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dr. Phil here, trying to set up a video perfectly. I've set it more perfectly before. Let's try this now. I'm going to get the intro again because it was perfect before. Perfectly, perfect in every way. Very Mary Poppins on me, isn't it? Why is it so not perfect now? There we go. Oh, you can hear the noise is coming already. All right. So what we've got here is a little bit of a setup. I got a message a little while ago. Okay, Dr. Phil here. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I got a message a little while ago. Yes, I know he made the noise, so he deserves a little scratch. Like he's over here. You probably can't see here. She's out of camera shot. We've got Max here. Now, what you can see in Max is essentially a relatively vicious bird. I'm going to actually set back my relationship with him just a little bit, just to demonstrate a few principles. Basically, the whole concept here today is a biting. What causes bites? Why do they bite? Um, what can you do about a bite? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say basically, the take home message is there's not much you can do about a bite. The only thing you can do is avoid. Now that's easier said than done, of course. These birds are very intelligent and they have certain bite triggers. So avoiding is all about learning their triggers. But their triggers are pretty simple, especially with Max. Max, are we ready for some triggers? So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna bring my hand into the cage. Watch what happens. Okay. Can you see that? He's, he's clearly uncomfortable with my hand. He wants to be touched, believe it or not. This bird absolutely wants to be touched. And both of them have learned the hiss is a communication tool, so don't believe the hiss. It, those people who understand cockatoos understand that a hiss is a sign of go away. But Max has kind of learned to communicate with a series of hisses. But if I scratch him like this with a stick, he's okay. You can see that, can't you? Now here's the thing. Oh, no, did you make the noise? Did you make the noise? You made the noise, he's very cute. Okay, with Max, what you'll find out is, especially at the moment, because he's, he's, um, he's, uh, his feathers are dropping. <laughs> he's molting, thank you, couldn't think of the word. Because of that, he's got issues with pin feathers. Now you can see something really bizarre and paradoxical is the fact that he's actually letting me touch him. Now what I'm gonna do is hopefully you'll see this there is a limit to how much I can touch him. I can only do what is necessary. Hello, Loki, I know you make the noise and I'm trying to reward you. I'm also doing a video. If I go too far with these pins, he's going to let me know it. And I've actually got myself on a bit of a spring tether here. Ordinarily, you shouldn't show fear, but in this particular instance, it's okay to actually recoil when he shows discomfort at what I'm doing. It actually helps display a bit of confidence of what's going on. At the moment I can tell that he's putting his head down in a way in which he can't see me. That means he's perfectly fine doing this. The moment he starts looking at me, I'm going to get wary though. The moment that happens, he's going, oh, I'm a bit sick of this situation. So this is the deal. This bird is a very, very biting bird, but at the same time, he's perfectly okay with me, with me preening him basically, getting rid of those pin feathers because they are so itchy. But it's also quite an intimate thing. It's a bit of an honour. So you can see he's looking at me now and I'm, that's the cue to get away. He's going to bite if I keep going. Yeah, see that? I can relax him a little bit. So here's the second little thing that I do just to get him used to what's going on. And it's to feed him. But instead of taking the stuff out of the cage and feeding that way, instead of taking the bowls out of the cage, I literally feed him in the cage, just like this. So I just poke this in here, like that. He used to, he used to really, really hate it when I put any part of my body in. But now he associates me feeding him with my hand being in the cage, so he's quite okay with it. Although sometimes he will go for this um, pink scoop. If he does that, uh, I will actually stop doing that because I don't need to make him used to me in the cage anymore. The final thing that you can do, which is kind of a nice little rewardy thing, simply to give him treats. Now, if I hand feed him, he will bite me, 
and I'll probably end up with a bleeding hand. I'm not sure we want to have that on YouTube. I'm perfectly happy to demonstrate it. We're all sort of happy to demonstrate it, but nah, I won't demonstrate it. What I can do is I can stick the food just up on a log where you can't see it, and there's a bowl just over here, which I can also stick the food. But I can also give him a little treat out of the bowl. Now, this is another way of actually interacting with him without inviting the bite. And he loves it. And he's perfectly happy to eat that way. Why do we have to touch him anyway? The only reason I have to touch him is for medical reasons or whatever else. And then it's just personal gratification, really. So as long as you're looking after the bird, don't worry too much about touching him. And because you've got their best interests at heart, well, they're going to end up trusting you anyway, aren't they? Yeah, that's right, you need a bit of a scratch just around the back, do you? Yeah, I know, I'm getting to you, Loki. You've made the noise, it's really good. But that's what I thought I'd show you. Just, basically, if you treat the bird with respect, treat it like a relationship, not a um, power relationship. Whoa, there it goes. Um, if you treat it like a power relationship, I touched a sensitive feather, and now he's not going to let me touch again. Yeah, the beak only? Yeah, fair enough. You treat it like a genuine relationship, give and take. He talks to you, you talk to him. She talks to you, you talk to her, depending on what bird you've got. If it's based on mutual respect, then the biting incidents, they just go down anyway. The one thing you can expect, regardless of what it is, Loki's a beautiful bird and she's got an amazing attitude. She still bites a little bit from time to time. You've got to expect to be bitten a little bit. Avoid as much as you can, but that just comes with the territory of owning a bird. I'm hoping this is useful for you. Um, like and subscribe, do all the cool things, but that's probably all I needed to tell you. So everyone have a lovely day. Have you got anything to tell everybody? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Dr. Villard.